Shalom. In my studies, I found that Messiah had said that he would be in the grave three days and three nights. And in my study, I found that it was explained that Messiah was in the grave three days and three nights. So he had to have been crucified on a Wednesday. And so what I have done is I have taken three different witnesses to support what I found. And I've just read what they have written in the hopes that this will help to clarify the three days and three nights. First of all, Passover is the first of the three annual festivals. And it commemorated the final plague on Egypt when the firstborn of the Egyptians died and the Israelites were spared because of the blood smeared on the doorposts. In Exodus 12, verse 11, verse 21, verse 27, 43, and 48. And Passover took place on the 14th day at evening of the first month. Leviticus 23, 5. The animal, lamb, or kid to be slain was selected on the 10th day of the month, Exodus 12, 3, and slaughtered on the 14th day and then eaten, Deuteronomy 16, verse 7. So I just wanted to say just that much. I'm not going into detail about the Passover. Just concentrating on the three days and three nights. Now, I have taken uh, information from the www.revelations.org.za forward slash 3d 3n.htm and also from Messiah www.messiah's house of Yahweh.org forward slash sermon and also from www.messianicgentiles.blogspot.com forward slash 2007. And those are the different testimonies or the different write-ups that, that you would hear in this uh, CD so that it can be cleared up about the three days and three nights so that we can share the information with other people that may have been where we have been and actually thought that Messiah was crucified on Friday when he actually was not according to the Hebrew mindset and studies of the scriptures that have been imparted to us. So have be blessed as you listen to this and pass it along to someone else that may wonder how do we get three days and three nights remembering that Jonah was given as a sign because he was in the the fish three days and three nights Shalom when did the crucifixion take place on which day was Messiah crucified? We read in Mark 15 verses 42 through 47 about the events on that afternoon of the crucifixion. And now when the even was come, because it was a preparation, that is, the day before the Sabbath, and he, Joseph, bought fine linen and took him down and wrapped him in the linen and laid him in a sepulcher which was hewed out of a rock. Does that not confirm the common belief that he was crucified on Friday? Seeing that Friday is the day before the weekly Sabbath, we know that it states that his body was laying in the grave just before the Sabbath broke, which is roughly at between 5 p.m. to 6 p.m. according to Bible time reckoning. If the burial was on Friday between 5 to 6 p.m., then 72 hours forward would bring us to between 5 to 6 p.m., on Monday afternoon for the resurrection. By counting forward three nights, we also come to Monday. For this we cannot accept as we read in John 20 verse 1. It was very early on the first day of the week, Sunday and still dark. 
When Mary, Hebrew name Miriam, of Magdala, came to the tomb, she saw that the stone had been moved away from the tomb. Yahushua had already risen earlier. Also, Luke 24, verse 1, Mark 16, verse 2. On the other hand, again, if he was risen on Sunday, as is commonly taught, then it leaves us with one hour maximum for Friday in the grave, plus 24 hours for Saturday, plus a maximum of 12 hours for Sunday, reckoning from sunset to sunset. Whichever way we count, it leaves us with a maximum total of 37 hours, or one day and two nights in the grave, as previously explained in this study. Shall we now stop right there and find fault with the time reckoning of Yahushua, or shall we search through the scriptures for the answer? Something is wrong somewhere, and that is obvious, isn't it? But what and where? The lie exposed. Let us then start from the earliest time that we know according to the Bible, that he was already risen from the grave. From here we will work back in time to find a rough starting point for the time of the crucifixion. Let us presume, therefore, that he rose at roughly 5 a.m. on Sunday morning, according to John 20, verse 1, and Mark 16, verse 2. It was still dark, just as the sun was rising, when the women visited the grave and found it empty. He had already risen earlier. It may have been much earlier. Counting back 72 hours from here would bring us to roughly 5 a.m. on Thursday morning. Well, this also cannot be. For we know that he was buried just before sunset, which is between 5 and 6 p.m. We must therefore set the time back even further, seeing that we have scriptural proof that Yahushua definitely did not arise later than sunrise on Sunday. He could therefore have risen much earlier than sunrise. This brings us to Wednesday at 5 to 6 p.m. See the chart. There's a chart available. Could this have been the time that Yahushua was crucified? Could it possibly have been on a Wednesday just before sunset? But you will say, remember that the next day was the Sabbath, and Thursday most certainly is not the Sabbath. Well, this is the very fact that has confused people, a fact which will reveal an entire section of the one true biblical faith of Yahweh a fact that has completely been overlooked because Christians have lost sight of the meaning of the sacred biblical feast days and what these really typify. This Thursday was not the Sabbath that was instituted at creation, the weekly Sabbath, but it was a Sabbath that was instituted at the first Passover in Egypt, Exodus 12, verse 14. But read in context from verse 1. The feast day Sabbath would become one of a series of seven of these annual Sabbath feasts, Hebrew Hagim or Moedim, which would be revealed to Moses at Sinai as part of the entire religious and law system of Yahweh, Leviticus 23, verse 15, Leviticus 24, verse 32, 31, and 39. These annual feasts were sacred Sabbaths called high days, John 19, verse 31, which could occur on any day of the week. They were to be kept forever. It is to these Sabbaths that the enemy has blinded people. This Sabbath holds the key to the whole mystery. It had nothing to do with the creation Sabbath, which is a weekly Sabbath. This Sabbath of the 15th of Aviv is to be kept once a year only. This Sabbath is the Sabbath that was the day after the Passover sacrifice, Leviticus 23 and Exodus 12. This Sabbath was and is to this day part of the Jewish festive period of Pesach, Passover. In Christianity, this period was become known as Easter and retains at best some vague similarities to Pesach, the biblical ordained feast. This Pesach, Passover institution, required that a Pesach, Passover lamb, had to be slaughtered on the 14th day of the Jewish month of Aviv, which later became known as Nisan. According to the revelation of God's religious system given at Sinai 50 days after the exodus from Egypt, which was preceded by the Pesach, 
Passover lamb sacrifice. This Pesach, Passover sacrifice was to be followed by the seven-day festival of unleavened bread. The first of these seven days, 15th Aviv, was to be a feast Sabbath and the last, 21 Aviv. This entire eight-day festival became known as Pesach, Passover. When the death angel of Yahweh passed over, skipped the homes of those Israelites in Egypt, which displayed the blood of sacrificial lamb on their doorposts. All churches accept that the Passover lamb slaughtered yearly by the Israelites typified the true lamb that had to come. John the Baptist pointed to Yahushua and said, Behold the lamb of the Most High. John 1 verse 29, all churches also believe that Messiah was crucified at Pesach, Passover time. John confirms this at the crucifixion in John 19 verse 14. It was the preparation of the Passover, 14th Abib, in about the sixth hour, noon, and he said unto the Jews, Behold your king. The Feast of Unleavened Bread required that all leaven had to be cast out of Israelite homes by the 14th, the Passover. Hence, this day, 14th of Viv, became traditionally known as the Preparation Day. To this day, the weeks preceding Pesach, Passover, is a very busy time for the lady of a Jewish home. The entire house, which emphasizes in, on the kitchen, emphasis on the kitchen is cleaned out and cooking utensils are changed for the festive period. It may not be coincidental that spring clean of the home became a common term for Westerners, as aviv in Hebrew means spring season. The father of the household inspects the home on this day in a special family ritual, and the mother prepares food and special symbolic emblems for the evening's Pesach, Passover Seder supper. It is this supper, pa Pesach, Passover Seder, that Yahushua and his disciples prepared for, the last supper, before his ordeal the next morning. The month of Aviv was calculated from the appearing of the new moon, and irrespective of which day of the week this occurred, the Jews would count 14 days when the Pesach, Passover commemoration would then start. The Pesach Sabbath is determined by the monthly phases of the moon and not by the weekly sab cycle. In the year of the crucifixion, the 14th of Aviv fell on a Wednesday, and the Thursday was the annual Sabbath feast day, a high day. And uh, they, they do have a study chart. And it says, further confirmation of these facts are also found in John 19 verses 30 and 31 which describe the events that took place immediately after the crucifixion. It was preparation day and to prevent the bodies remaining on the cross during the Sabbath since that Sabbath was a day of special limit, a high day. John 19 verse 30 through 31 Exodus 12 Verse 16, Leviticus 23, verse 6. Sabbath means rest, and that Thursday was a Sabbath, a solemn festive day, a day in commemoration of Israel's deliverance from bondage in Egypt. Yahushua now having become our deliverer from our exile and bondage. Wonderful Bible proof. When these annual feast Sabbaths were celebrated, it could well happen that there would be two Sabbaths in that certain week, the annual Sabbath, which could fall on any day of the week and the weekly Sabbath. These two Sabbaths in certain years, of course, could go it coincide. But otherwise, this weekly Sabbath Saturday was never called a high day. Neither was it called a feast day unless it coincided with the annual high of feast day. The fact that there were two Sabbaths in the crucifixion week is wonderfully proven by two apparently contradictory verses in the Bible. The first of these is found in Mark 16 verse 1. When the Sabbath was over, Mary and others bought spices with which to go and anoint him. The second is found in Luke 23 verse 56. After his body had been laid to the tomb, they returned and prepared spices and ointments and rested the Sabbath day according to the commandment. We shall first apply these statements to the commonly accepted theory of Friday, 
crucifixion and Sunday resurrection to see if it fits the picture. If Messiah was crucified on Friday, then according to the first verse, the women should have bought the spices on Saturday evening, i.e. after the Sabbath. This would enable them to prepare it and go to the grave before sunrise on Sunday morning. But read the second verse. This states that after they had prepared the spices, they rested on the Sabbath according to the law. This would mean that the following day Sunday was also a Sabbath, so that they could not have gone to the grave until after Sunday. But Luke 24 verse 1 explicitly states that the women went to the grave on the first day of the week, Sunday, before dawn. So this theory does not fit. As heaven was to be the judge, heaven could declare the outcome. The angel spoke and he said to the women, There is no need for you to be afraid. I know you are looking for Yahushua who was crucified. He is not here, for he is risen, as he said he would. Matthew 28, verse 5 and 6. As he said, dear reader, may these words be repeated a thousand times before proceeding. His time reckoning was not faulty. As he said means that he had kept his word. If he had not kept his word, then how could we trust him to keep all the wonderful promises he made to his followers for the future? By having fulfilled this sign, he gave those who doubted him. We may be sure that every promise of his will come true. The eternal cannot lie. And Yahushua is the eternal, manifest in flesh. 1 Timothy 3, 16, Titus 2, verse 13, Revelation 1 verse 8, refer our library of studies on the oneness and the deity of Messiah. You can find this at the website www.revelation.org.za forward slash menu oneness.htm. Messiah buried three days and three nights raised the third day. Matthew 16 verse 21. From that time forth began Yahushua to show unto his disciples how that he must go unto Jerusalem and suffer many things of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised again the third day. Matthew 17 verse 23. And they shall kill him and the third day he shall be raised again, and they were exceeding sorry. Mark 9, verse 31, For he taught his disciples and said unto them, The Son of Man is delivered into the hands of men, and they shall kill him, and after that he is killed, he shall rise the third day. See also Mark 10, verse 34, Raised after three days. Mark 8 verse 31 and he began to teach them that the son of man must suffer many things and be rejected of the elders and of the chief priests and scribes and be killed and after three days rise again Matthew 27 verse 63 saying sir we remember that the deceiver said while he was yet alive after three days I will rise again how can the Messiah rise on the third day? Yet, after three days, Yahushua was crucified on Wednesday and placed in the tomb just before sunset, before the high day Sabbath on Thursday. John 19, verses 14 and 31. Matthew 27, verse 62. Mark 15, chapter Verse 42, Luke 23rd chapter, verse 54. So the Messiah was placed in the tomb just before sunset on Wednesday. Wednesday night, one night. Thursday night, two nights. Friday night, three nights. Thursday daytime, one day. Friday daytime, two days. Sabbath daytime, three days. Since Messiah was resurrected on the third day Sabbath afternoon, 
yet resurrected after three days and three nights, fulfilling the scriptures arising on the third day, yet rising after a total of three days and three nights, just as the sign of the prophet Jonah. There are some tracts that teach the ladies made a Saturday evening visit to the tomb and found the tomb empty based on their understanding of Matthew 28 verse 1. If they would have found the tomb empty, why would they go the next morning with the spices and ointments to finish the burial? Surely they wouldn't have forgotten that soon of the body being raised when they supposedly visited the tomb the night before. This is a misunderstanding of the text. They did not visit the tomb Saturday evening. In the original text, there were no chapters and verses nor punctuation. And when this was written in the text, later sometimes certain doctrines were punctuated into the text. In Matthew 27, verse 62, it speaks of the next day after the crucifixion was a high day Sabbath, first day of unleavened bread, not the weekly Sabbath. When the chief priests and Pharisees came to Pilate to demand a guard be placed at the tomb so the disciples couldn't steal the body and pretend there was a resurrection. The first part of Matthew 28 verse 1, in the end of the Sabbath, belongs in the last part of Matthew 27 verse 66. They were setting the watch in the end of the high day Sabbath at sunset, the time that the first watch started. Matthew 27, verse 62. Now the next day that followed, the day of the preparation, the high day Sabbath, the chief priests and Pharisees came together unto Pilate, saying, Sir, we remember that that deceiver said, while he was yet alive, after three days I will rise again. Command therefore that the sepulchre be made sure until the third day lest his disciples come by night and steal him away and say unto the people, He is risen from the dead, so the last error shall be worse than the first. Pilate said unto them, Ye have a watch. Go your way. Make it as sure as you can. So they went and made the sepulchre sure, sealing the stone and putting a watch in in the putting a watch in the end of the Sabbath, the high day Sabbath, John 19, verse 31, Matthew 28, verse 1. In the end of the Sabbath, as it began to dawn toward the first day of the week, came Mary Magdalene and the other Mary to see the sepulchre. Now Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John all harmonized with the resurrection of the Messiah and the time period that the ladies came to visit the tomb when putting in the proper punctuation. Mark 16, verse 2. And very early in the morning, the first day of the week, they came unto the sepulchre at the rising of the sun. Luke 24, verse 1. Now upon the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they came unto the sepulchre, bringing spices which they had prepared and certain others with them. John 10, 1. The first day of the week cometh Mary Magdalene early, when it was yet dark, unto the sepulchre and seeth the stone taken away from the sepulchre. The Sign of Jonah Let's have a real close look at the Bible in regards to the three days so misunderstood by organized religion. Then we will examine Messiah's last week prior to Calvary. Yeshua was asked if there would be a sign that he was truly the Messiah, and he said the only sign that they would know of was the sign of the prophet Jonah, 
which was the following, Matthew 12, verse 40. But just as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of the sea monster, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. Jonah was sent to Nineveh, Nineveh meaning house of Nimrod, forward slash Ninus, to warn the people of their pagan ways. It is made obvious that the three days, see Matthew 26, verse 20, Matthew 26, verse 61, and Matthew 27, verse 40, Mark 15, verse 29, and three nights referred to, were referring to the resurrection of Messiah. It clearly states, three days and three nights, seven and two hours, Yeshua would be gone prior to his resurrection. If we take Good Friday evening, just before sunset, at the time when Messiah was buried, then three days and three nights later would mean that Yeshua was resurrected Monday. This is done with obvious simple addition and yet many have accepted Sunday as the day of resurrection. This in itself is an error of course because Yeshua was not crucified on Good Friday anyways. The name Jonah means dove. Dove is a Hebrew idiom meaning righteous and pure. This is a very significant Hebrewism that points to the Messiah. Now let us look more closely at Yeshua in the Jordan and maybe we can see something fresh in the living word of Yah. The sign of Jonah the dove was upon Yeshua from that day in the garden, i.e. Jordan, when he was immersed, baptized. What we are told is that the Holy Spirit descended in a bodily form like a dove upon Yeshua and a voice, a bat cold daughter's voice came from heaven saying, Thou art my beloved Son, in thee I am well pleased. Anyone who was standing by would have seen this great sign and heard the voice. To some the voice may have sounded like thunder, yet I believe from this text in Luke 3 verse 22 many saw and heard the voice of El Shaddai. Jonah was a type of Yeshua, while Jonah's body was in the belly of the fish. His spirit was in the depths of Sheol, apported for three days. At that time, Sheol was considered to be in the depths of the earth, the pit or abyss. Just as Yeshua's spirit left him for three days at Calvary, so too did Jonah's. As Jonah's body was spewed out on the shore of the Mediterranean Sea and came back to life, so too did Yeshua come back to life after three full days and nights at Calvary. They were looking for the Messiah to come, and many were blessed to see this sign, showing them that Yeshua was a righteous person, a dove. The sign of the dove was evident to all who had eyes to see. Even Yeshua knew this sign was unmistakably his. Yeshua explains in Matthew 12, verses 38 through 41, then some of the scribes and Pharisees said to him, Teacher, we want to see a sign from you. But he answered and said to them, And even an adulterous generation craves for a sign, and yet no sign will be given to it but the sign of Jonah the prophet. For just as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of the sea monster, so will the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. The men of Nineveh were stand up with this generation at the judgment and will condemn it because they repented at the preaching of Jonah and behold something greater than Jonah is here. But we see that Yeshua himself speaks that no sign was to be given but the sign of Jonah the dove. So a sign was given that day at the Jordan at the beginning of his terror ministry and that the sign of Jonah would be given one more time at the end of his ministry and no other sign would Israel be given apart from the sign of Jonah. We have no idea as to how many were at the river Jordan on the day of his baptism, but I dare say there were many. I believe Yah saw fit to open his son's ministry with many in attendance. Just like Jonah, Yeshua had a message from Yah, and that message was almost the same. Shuva, repent, and return to Yahweh and his Messiah, the sent one before judgment falls. Many did return and repent, and many did not. Look at Yeshua in the Garden of Gethsemane. Before the agony of the stake, 
before the sins of the world were placed on him. He could have run like Jonah did, but praise Yah, the greater Jonah did not. The sign of Jonah is a sign of the son of the living Yah. In Leviticus 23, it listed seven annual holy Sabbath days. I'm sorry. Let me repeat. In Leviticus 23, it lists the seven annual holy days. Each of these holy days was considered Sabbath, a Sabbath, no matter what day of the week it occurred on. All high days or annual Sabbaths except Pentecost, which always occurs on the first day of the week, fell on particular calendar dates rather than set days of the week. John 19, verse 31. The Jews, therefore, because it was a day of preparation, so that their bodies should not remain on the stake on the Sabbath, for that Sabbath was a high day. Ask Pilate that their legs might be broken and that they might be taken away. This tells us that the body of Messiah was removed from the stake on the preparation 14th day, one day before the annual Sabbath or high day. Messiah kept the Passover, Last Supper, not Seder meal with his disciples the night before his death. This was Tuesday as per Luke 22, verse 15. And he said to them, I have earnestly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. The Passover feast that year was on Tuesday, and it was also the preparation day for the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Messiah died the next day, which was still the day of Passover, 14th of Abib, or Nisan, as per the Hebrew calendar, Leviticus 23, verse 5. As per Leviticus 23, verses 6 through 7, it tells us that the next day, beginning the evening after his crucifixion, was not a weekly Sabbath, but an annual Sabbath, high holy day, the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, Leviticus 23, verse 6 through 7. Then on the 15th day of the same month, there is the Feast of Unleavened Bread to Yah. For seven days you shall eat unleavened bread. On the first day you shall have a holy convocation. You shall not do any laborious work. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 20. But now Messiah has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who are asleep. Messiah was crucified at 9 a.m. Mark 15, verse 25. And it was the third hour when they crucified him and died at exactly 3 p.m. That afternoon he was buried by Joseph, a converted Pharisee member of the council prior to sunset. Mark 15, verse 34. And at the ninth hour Yeshua cried out with a loud voice, Elo, Elo, Lama, Shabbatana which is translated, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? On Passover afternoon, which is also the preparation day for the annual Sabbath, it is also clear that Messiah was resurrected at the exact same time of day in the late afternoon. Since the women found him already gone Sunday morning, we conclude that he was resurrected the previous afternoon on Saturday. This would mean, without a doubt, that he was buried three days and three nights earlier, Wednesday afternoon. Indeed, Passover nice in the 14th that year, A.D. 31, fell on a Wednesday. Yeshua was crucified on a Wednesday the 14th at 9 a.m., the same time and day that the Passover lambs were slain, as was done on the day when the Jews were told to slaughter a lamb and smear the blood on the door on preparation day the day before the Passover. Yeshua was also slain like the lamb. Yeshua died on that same day at 3 p.m. and rose again on Saturday, the 17th, at 3 p.m., just hours before the Feast of First Fruits began. He arose the exact same time of day he died, 72 hours later as stated in Matthew 12, verse 40. Yeshua was divine. He arose from the dead on the divine day of Yahweh, the seventh day of the week, Saturday. All these familiar with what numbers represent in the Bible understand the significance of the number seven. It represents the divine nature of Yah and was the appropriate seventh day of the week that Messiah was resurrected. This was a divinely appointed day of Yah, Yah's Sabbath. What is the correct day of our Passover lamb's execution sacrifice? 
Let's quickly go through it again from another angle. In order to figure out when Messiah was crucified, we have to establish the day of his resurrection. We must mathematically work it out backwards from the order we have in the scriptures. According to Leviticus 23, 10 through 11, Messiah, the first fruits from among the dead, had to be resurrected on the day after the weekly Sabbath during the seven-day feast of unleavened bread, Passover. What does scripture teach? This rehearsal of the slaughter of the lamb was a shadow of the lamb of Yah to come. Exodus 12 verse 3 clearly states that the selection of the lamb occurs on the 10th of the month. And Exodus 12 verse 6 states that the lamb is to be slaughtered at dusk on the 14th of the same month. According to Exodus 12, there should only be four days between the selection of the lamb and its slaughter. John 12 verse 1 indicates that Messiah arrived in Bethany six days before Passover. If John is correct, which I assume he is, then Messiah would have arrived in Bethany on the ninth of Nisan. John 12 12 states that on the next day the Messiah went up to Jerusalem. If Messiah was in Bethany on the ninth, then he must have rolled up and to Jerusalem on the tenth. On the tenth of Nisan, Abib, the high priest would leave the temple and go down to the sheep pens at Bethany to select a lamb for Passover. After the high priest selected the lamb, he would return back up to the temple carrying the lamb, lest it should stumble and become blemished. Pilgrims who had come up to Jerusalem for the feast lined the road to praise the lamb that the high priest had selected for Passover. Are you beginning to see the picture? Let's look at a type here. Messiah, ooh, ouch. The Lamb of Yah comes up from Bethany on the same day and at the same hour as the high priest. But instead of the people praising the high priest's lamb, they were shouting praises to the Messiah. The religious leaders then told Messiah to rebuke his disciples, Luke 19, verse 39. After the high priest returned to the temple, he would examine his lamb for the next four days to ensure it was unblemished and fit for sacrifice. During the next four days, Messiah too was examined by both the chief priests and the elders. Matthew 21, verses 23 through 27. Matthew 21, verses 15 through 22. Matthew 21, verse 23 through 33. Matthew 21, verses 34 through 40. And after four days, neither they nor Pilate could find any fault with Messiah. The Lamb of Yah, Mark 12, verse 35, and Luke 23, verse 14. As stated in John 18, verse 28, Yeshua went before Pilate, before Passover. Now let's dig a little deeper. Here's a nugget most will miss if it is not pointed out to them. John 1, 9, 29 through 31. The next day he saw Yeshua coming to him and said, Behold the Lamb of Yah who takes away the sin of the world. This is he on behalf of whom I said, After me comes a man who has a higher rank than I, for he existed before me, and I did not recognize him. But in order that he might be manifested to Israel, I came baptizing in water. As we must just previously read, only the high priest or a descendant of the high priest could ever offer up the Passover lamb at the temple. Yeshua came to John at the river Jordan, and what does John declare to all those who witness Yeshua baptism of the Holy Spirit? John the Baptist was from the line of the high priest of Israel. John's father was Zechariah, Luke 1, 5. John had the authority to declare Yeshua as the Lamb of Yah who came to take away the sins of the world. Long before Yeshua's death, John had proclaimed him as a shadow of things to come. John the Baptist was born on Passover. The Jew, I'm, I'm sorry, let's look at something else that's not a coincidence. John the Baptist was born on Passover. The Jews had been expecting the Messiah to come. But they knew according to scripture, Malachi 4, 5, that a man had to come to them with the spirit of Elijah first. To this very day, the Jewish people still set a plate for 
e Elijah at the table during Passover. Yeshua revealed John's having the spirit of Elijah in Matthew 11, verse 14. And if you care to accept it, he himself is Elijah, who was to come. He who has ears to ear, hear, let him hear. Now what day was the Lamb of Yah slaughtered? If Messiah was resurrected early on the first day of the week, Roman Gregorian calendar, then we need to count back three days and three nights, and we will arrive at Thursday for Messiah's execution. This is how it would work out if the practice of, practices of the pagan churches proclaimed Christian churches of the world were correct. Even looking through their eyes, it doesn't work out to a Friday for Calvary.